Calm I down. Listen, Stacy, I'll see you. We are going to meet with a friend of mine from Washington, and maybe, just maybe, he'll come up with a few answers. All right? I, I, I just can't believe it. Well, life is short. I mean, f*** him. You know, who needs him? Come on, give us a look. That was a deleted scene from A Few to a Kill, where Roger Moore likely improvised that last bit. Understandably, but also, unfortunately, it wasn't used. There are a lot of unused scenes in the Bond films that got deleted. Some for the better, but others I really wish would have been kept in the film. Your new car. Jaguar? Wrong assignment. This is what we're gonna be looking at in this video. Following my recent one easter egg in every Bond film video, we're going to be taking a look at one deleted scene in every Bond film. Here we go. In Doctor No, Honey Rider is strapped down a slope with filling water. When Bond comes in to rescue her, the water has barely posed a threat. This is because originally the water wasn't going to be the danger, but crabs who would surround her and try to nibble away at her. But because a lot of the crabs remained lifeless or were even dead, they were removed and we were left with quite a lackluster scene. In order to explain how Bond and Tatiana were able to meet on the ferry boat on the Bosporus in From Russia With Love without being seen by the constant following of the Russians, you know, since we had the uh, we follow them, they follow us policy that was shown to be a big part of the movie. So the filmmakers originally had a scene to explain this just before the boat meeting where Bond would be followed by the usual Russian agent trailing them while at the same time Karen Bay would follow that guy in his Rolls Royce. Bond would yank the handbrake causing the Russian agent to crash into the back of him and Karim in turn would crash on top of them, causing the Russian's agent to be sandwiched. Karim Bay would walk out, spill some ass of his cigarette and utter the line, my friend, such is life, and leave the Russian agent boxed in while Bond would get away. The reason they decided to cut this brilliant moment is for the simple fact that they forgot that they had already killed the Russian agent in the Saint Sophia Mosque a few scenes before. Goldfinger actually had a deleted moment that can still be seen in the opening titles where Bond is walking past a royal mail truck having some sort of exchange with the man. It's very likely that this would take place as Bond would enter Q's lab and maybe got caught because it would make the sequence too long. In any case, it's a curious bit as you can still spot the residue right here in the opening titles. Fondable would feature a moment where Bond would be shown around the Disco Volante, a moment which also featured in the novel, where Bond would try and use this opportunity to find out if they had anything to do with the stealing of the nukes. He would use his Geiger counter to try and find out if the bombs were aboard. It was likely cut because Domino would end up doing exactly the same later on in the movie, or maybe it was simply cut to keep up with the movie's pacing. Bond's arch nemesis Ernst Stavro Blofeld, first seen in full in Yoni Live Twice, wasn't immediately going to be Donald Pleasance. Originally, Jan Werich was going to star in the role instead. Apparently, some scenes with him as Blofeld were already recorded. I think because the actor didn't pose as much of a threat the filmmakers were hoping for, he was replaced with Donald Pleasance. In any case, it's a curious bit to see him among the cast. As Bond arrives at the College of Arms to meet Sir Hilary Bray, we also notice a assistant. This assistant would have played a much larger role originally and would be named Fidian. Throughout the conversation, Bond would notice a suspicious statue that would reveal that Vidian is a rat, likely working for Blofeld, and an extensive foot chase would follow. 
it would take place on top of the rooftops of the College of Arms and would likely end in the London Underground and Fidian would meet his doom through a post truck. To lower suspicion to Blofeld, a fake accident would be staged where 19 people would be killed in a fake train crash. The authorities would find Fidian's body among them. What's cool about this is in the actual film, as Bond arrives in Switzerland the scene after, you can still see the mention of this train crash in the newspaper that Campbell is reading. Now that is attention to detail I was delighted to discover. Shame all of this was cut. In Diamonds Are Forever, Tiffany and Bond find Plenty O'Toole's body in Tiffany's swimming pool for no real reason. We have no clue how she ended up there. This is because originally after she was dumped into the pool from the hotel room, she would sneak back up only to find that Bond was already sleeping with Tiffany at that moment. Feeling insulted, she would find out the address of Tiffany going through her stuff. So she ended up at her villa at the wrong place and time, probably being killed by Blofeld's goons who may mistake her for Tiffany. In any case, because all of this was cut, the whole context behind it is completely lost in the film. In Live and Let Die, apparently there would have been a fight sequence between Bond and one of Kananga's goons on San Monique, where Bond would be seen strangling him in brutal fashion. Though it is still unknown to this day whether or not these are actual stills of a deleted scene or simply publicity photos, as very little can be found in the screenplay of this particular moment. Originally the showdown between Bond and Scaramanga would have been extended as Bond would throw a can of gasoline which Scaramanga would destroy with his golden gun. Scaramanga would then reload his single bullet golden gun by hidden bullets in his belt. So apparently he would have cheated as he clearly always states he only needs one bullet. The Spy Who Loved Me has one of the more bizarre deleted scenes as apparently the Atlantis would feature a pool with a nude model that would perform an underwater ballet act with a sea lion belonging to Rico Browning. Apparently this would have been the same sea lion that he used for his movie Salty. The more you know. From what we know, some of Moonraker's impressive film sets would have served a greater function. The room where Bond and Holly Goodhead are trapped underneath the Moonraker shuttle was to have been used as a meeting room for Drax and the bad guys, who would probably discuss their business here. Another film set on the space station apparently was to have been called the Love Room or the Chamber of Love, where Drax's perfect samples of humans would make love? You would think he would let them finish their business on Earth to repopulate there. But no, apparently the space station would have been a floating brothel. The fight with the ice hockey athletes was to have been a lot longer. The scene would end with Bond using a snow truck to dispose of the goons. This definitely is a moment that I wish they kept in the film. a small deleted moment than an actual full scene in Octopussy right after Magna would request Bond for another refill, Bond and her would make out passionately and he would utter a very similar line to Connery's The Things I Do for England. What I do for England. Another scene in A Few to a Kill I really wish they kept in the film where Bond would have been placed in police custody after the car chase in Paris. Okay. M would be the one to bail him out and the police would go through his belongings in a very funny moment. <laughs> Most unusual. From Russia. Mm -hmm. With love. <laughs> M. One lighter. 
ben merde, non, c'est pas possible. Mais bordel, mais enlevez-moi tout ça. Get out, quickly. Au moins. Au moins, monsieur. Monsieur, s'il vous plaît, signez-moi ça. In the living daylights, there would have been a moment that definitely would have seemed more suitable for Roger Moore's Bond than Timothy Dalton's. In his escape in Morocco, Bond would have used a carpet to try and get away. This would have seemed like Bond would use a flying carpet. One of the ones I desperately would have loved to have kept in the film as Sanchez is released back into freedom in the city of Isthmus in License to Kill, he would arrive a hero, gathered by journalists. Meanwhile from his hotel room, Bond would look at this moment from the TV in disgust in such a Bondian moment, smoking, drinking and determined to start his vendetta. In GoldenEye's opening, we see Bond sneak into the dam and open the fence to get in. We don't know exactly how he does it, but there was actually a moment where this was shown. There would have been a scene where the Russian guards would be watching TV as Bond would sneak past them into the facility in the background. Carver's right-hand man Gupta in Tomorrow Never Dies is mostly an IT expert, but little more. He was actually played by legendary magician Ricky Jay, who was able to perform extraordinary card manipulations. One of his skills is throwing cards. This would have played a role in the film as he would have been seen throwing cards both in practice and later in an action scene trying to hurt Bond. All the car throwing unfortunately was cut, reducing Gupta to be a character with very little substance. In The World Is Not Enough, Renard is introduced emerging from a place called the Devil's Breath, holding a boiling hot stone, introducing his no pain gimmick. Originally, he would have been introduced at the start of the film, talking with the cigar girl and intimidate her a little bit. It was probably the right call to get rid of this scene and have his introduction later on that was way more impactful. It's always cool though to see deleted footage. As Bond flies back to London and meets with Roger Moore's daughter playing the stewardess, there originally would have been a scene that would explain how Bond would pass the customs. He would suddenly be away from his seat and would exit the plane through the landing gear. Ironically enough, they did do exactly this in Cash Me If You Can, which came out in the same year. It's probably for the best that they kept this out of the film. The opening sequence of Casino Royale where Bond is seen making his first kill in the bathroom was to have been a much larger sequence. The bathroom would be at a cricket match in Pakistan where Bond would follow his target to the bathroom where the rest of the sequence we now know would ensue. It was lightly cut to keep the movie's pace intact. As a lot of Bond fans would know, the script of Quantum was all over the place during 2008's writer's strike and an alternate ending was filmed of Bond meeting up with Mr. White and Guy Haynes. A prominent Quantum member he identified during the movie but doesn't appear anymore after that. The scene would have included the Bond, James Bond again, much like in the ending of Casino Royale. Supposedly, Bond would have killed both men in this ending. Imagine if that happened. How drastically different would Spectre and No Time to Die have been featuring his daughter and eventually his grandchild? It's one of the most curious deleted scenes in the series. In Skyfall, a whole sequence was filmed where Severin would hand over an Adachi case to Patrice containing the sniper's rival all of which would take place at the Shanghai Terminal. 
they would both go their separate ways and Bond would pass her by on the escalators undetected wearing the cap and sunglasses we still see him wear in the film. The Mexico opening sequence in Spectre would have featured the inclusion of an armored police truck. It's not known how involved this vehicle would have been in the sequence but in any case it was to have been here as several behind the scenes pictures and footage of it can be found. The scene where Bond and Moneypenny go out to visit Q actually would have featured the moment of them arriving in Bond's DBS as there are several pictures of Bond and Moneypenny getting out of the car. I guess this is another result of a cut made in simple favor for the pacing of the film. And that was one deleted scene in every Bond film. Of course I only mentioned one for each and there are several more I could have mentioned. For example, did you know the Aston Martin Valhalla was actually going to be used in No Time To Die as the car that Nomi drives? Or that Sammy Davis Jr. was to have had a cameo in Las Vegas in Diamonds Are Forever? Or that Bond and Miranda Frost would be making out in the hot springs in Iceland in Die Another Day. There are so much more of these scenes to be mentioned but I hope you had fun and saw a couple you were unaware of in this video. I also want to give a special thank you to commander007.net where a lot of information on the deleted scenes is archived. Please like and subscribe if you haven't and if you want to go the extra mile please consider supporting the channel on Patreon where a lot of awesome channel bonuses and rewards are given in return. See you guys in the next video.